great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thanks, DigiKey. This is the time of the week where Lady Adafruit uses power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the chips, parts, and more that you need. Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week? I'm glad you asked. This week, I've been doing a redesign of a TFT feather wing. And uh, the TFT feather wing has an interesting navigation switch on it. And I realized um, this is a, a pretty a cool, weird part that I would like to show because the original manufacturer like stopped making it but there's an alternative that's uh basically pin compatible so let's go to the overhead and i'll show it off okay so um one thing that's uh you know if, if you're if you're adding buttons in a user interface to a project you know it's very common to have like a navigation thing like up down left right um and then usually a select so you can go through a menu or you can um, change specifications. This is a little uh, joystick as well. That's another option. And this is this this one doesn't have a select. It's only a uh, two-axis joystick. But usually, you know, you'll have this, and then maybe you'll have a select button next to it. We don't also have a joystick we recently put into the shop that um, is through hole, but does have a, a select on it. Hold on, let me uh, get some good focus here. Um, this nav switch is one that I like uh, quite a bit. So these nav switches, um, they're a little bit more compact than a joystick and they're not, this is, you know, true analog joystick. So you need two ADCs, X and Y, and you can measure, you know, in the center it's, uh, you know, ADC VDD divided by two. And then as you go left and right, it goes from zero to VDD. The, um, these, uh, navigation switches, they, yeah, they tilt, you can kind of see that they tilt um, left, right, up and down, and they do have a select. And they're kind of clicky because they really are um, five mechanical switches. So I call them five-way navigation switches, although some would say it's two axes plus select, um, different ways of, of talking about it. But I like them because they're not that much bigger than like two tactile switches, and they're definitely smaller than four tactile switches. And they're, they're very um, lo you know, logical. You're like, oh, it's a little joystick. Like, I understand what you want me to do. You're, you know, you want me to move up, down, left, right. And so um, in case people wanted to add these to their products, I thought I'd show um, this part and some other parts on DigiKey. There's a couple navigation switches. Okay. So this is the, uh, just show this. This was the design. And this is the, the footprint. So it's nice is that it, it has uh, five switches and then they have one common and uh five uh pin connections so that it looks like this you know one common up up down left right and then select in so you uh just need four gpio pins and um you connect the common to either ground or power whichever one you want and you just need pull-ups so um and then here is uh just in case uh you want to see a nice big picture oh here it is so this is the the, the what it looks like in in big big letters um, so these are called navigation switches and so watch out because there's also thumb sticks right and that's that's kind of similar and sometimes they are grouped together but thumb sticks tend to be um, just small joysticks that are analog. So you see these these APEM switches. I mean, these are very fancy. Um, you know, we have this one. Like I said, this is XY, so, but not uh, select in. Some of these have select, some of them don't. But thumb switches tend to be, tend to be, tend to be analog to axis. Um, so instead, what we want is, uh, I'll go to the entire category. Uh, navigation switches. Now, what I'll say is there, there's um there's some really good stuff here, and like the thing about navigation switches is that it it's th there's a wide range of um, the navigation joysticks. They're from like very tiny ones. Like this one is is very small. This is you know maybe uh, eight millimeters by eight millimeters. It's they're these are very tiny, um, and they're you know pick and place surface mount to like large joysticks from like gray hill with like a gigantic idc connector so um they're all slightly different you know like here's this um big analog joystick and you can even see the uh the two pots on the side um but we want the and then this is kind of a nice it's like a, a vehicle 
you know, like this is from a car um, navigation. Uh, another, oh, well, so another one that's very popular is this one. This is like, you know, the Xbox uh, style controller joystick. A lot of these you'll notice um, they originally were made and used in uh, console games. Um, or our phones or something and then the part became genericized enough that you can then get it outside of that use case so like you know this is absolutely like a clone of like the xbox controller joystick you know nubbin um, from the original like xbox 360 um, you can get them now and they are two pots and a selector switch and they're very inexpensive so uh you know, these are larger they're not surface mount but um, they're also good options so uh let's look at the active navigation switches and um so yeah there's like different directionals uh there's ones that are like hall effect we want a uh, mechanical switch yeah just mechanical i think it will be under that and then um thumbstick again is uh usually analog we and joystick is usually something you grab with your hand and you move back and forth so you want navigation switch oh i'll show you the the one axis ones there's some um fun ones uh actually never mind sorry let's go let's let's stay stay on target i'll show you the the navigation switch later okay so um Here's the here's all the options for navigation switches. So again, um, there's like a mix mix match. There's like you know this uh, ADA assistive device, but let's uh, search by pricing so we can see all the different cost versions. So unfortunately, there's a lot that don't have um, photos, so you'll have to check the the data sheet. Um, e switch in particular makes a lot of these. Um, these are very slim style ones, so they're not too dissimilar than the, the nav switch I showed you, but it's like very compact and you would have your own, you know, it's, it's hard for a finger to do it. You'd want to have a mechanical add on. Um, this one I've seen in a couple projects, they're, they're fairly inexpensive and, uh, they're surface mountable. And then, um, this is the one that, like I said, this is the through hole version of the, uh, navigation switch. So you can see that you 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 can kind of sort of plug this into a breadboard. It's not quite breadboard friendly, um, but you'd have to solder it in. And then if you go down, you'll see uh, there's again a kind of a slim surface mount version, um, and this is the one that I use. So this is you can see the 360. One second. So you can see um, this one has mounting nubs on it which is actually kind of nice because it'll keep it from shearing off. And there's a little like clip in bits that if you want, you know, again, make it mechanically stable. So when people are pressing up and down, it doesn't shear off of the PCB. Um, but it basically just has six pads. You can pick and place it. Um, it comes on a very thick tape, but you know, the, as long as the pick and place nozzle can, can get onto that actuator, you're good to go. And one thing that I thought was kind of neat is this um, is available in the EagleCAD KiCad library, or the, sorry, the DigiKey KiCad library, which I didn't know that they had. Um, so do check it out. They also have a bunch of, of tutorials. So if you, if you want Sean to teach you uh, KiCad or KiCad, check out the tutorials. Um, there's also the CAD models, uh, the STP files, and you can sometimes get the, the if you're not using uh, KiCad, you're using Altium, Eagle, whatever, uh, you can get the footprint from uh, Snap, EDA, or Ultra Librarian, which I actually have been using a lot lately. I've been getting uh, footprints for parts. Even if I sometimes redraw the schematic symbol because I like, I like to have the parts grouped in a certain way, I'll reuse the footprint because they did the math of getting the pads in the right location. So check that out. Um, oh, and another thing is um, for a lot of these um, nav switches, you'll want to have a um, cap on top. For the navigation switch that I use, there's a little rubber cap that we actually uh, sell. It actually did appear down here. Let me see. Hold on. 
there you go. This black nubbin joystick, which DigiKey uh, stocks on our behalf, um, fits on top and even has a little like joystick symbol. It's not sold by eSwitch, it's actually a third party, but it fits very nicely on top of these um, five-way NAS switches and kind of gives it a nice um, rubbery feel. And you can see uh, here what it looks like. It does, it, you know, this, what, the only thing that I didn't realize is it overlapped the reset button. And so on the redesign, I'm moving the reset button because when this was designed, I didn't have that rubber nubbin piece. Um, but then I added it later and then realized it was a little little in the way. So that's the only thing to watch out for is it, it does overlap um, your bike components. However, um, like I said, I really like this nav switch. Strongly recommend it. Um, it's really great. It's very compact and takes up a lot less space than five tactile switches. And I uh, never had anyone say, oh, it was confusing to use or difficult to use. I think they're uh, kind of a joy uh, for adding an interface to your project. That's the great search. Where in the world is